Welcome to Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online, and hopefully you are truly fed by the worship of our God. As you can see, I'm wearing a mask today, and the only reason I'm doing that is because we were out of the state. We were in North Carolina or South Carolina in Myrtle Beach this past week, and Horry County, where Myrtle Beach is, had 3,500 infections in a day. So Don and I felt it would appropriate to wear our mask. Um, I will take it off, but I'm gonna be preaching from the pulpit rather than from down here. So I'm back for a little bit and Colin will be behind me. So we'll be safe in that, that situation. But while I'm down front here, I'm gonna be wearing my mask. Um, also wanted to say as a part of our summer uh, Bible self-study, I uh, will be sending out the materials related to this week's epistle lesson and if anybody would like to be added to that list, just give me a, either text me, give me a call, or call Rona, and we'll get you on that. We'll make sure you get your email address on that list to send out uh, that Bible study. Also, if you experience, uh, for those of you at home, if you experience some sound or video problems, please let us know so that we can make sure it's not a system-wide uh, event, and that way we can identify what's going on and eventually correct any glitches that may occur. And again, I want to thank you for all your help and support as we've dealt with some technical uh, issues. 
Also, next Sunday, August 15th, immediately following worship services, we'll be heading over to Knobles Grove for our annual church picnic. Now, we'll be in Pavilion D near the Ferris wheel. We won't be at T like we normally are. We'll be at D as in dog, and it's right by the Ferris wheel. And we, of course, have sign-up sheets posted right now. We've got about 34 people coming, and we've got all kinds of wonderful food coming as well. So we're looking forward to that. The church is providing the hot, uh, hot dogs and the chicken. So we'll have that there. And I just want to remind everybody, um, as we see this Delta variant increase our, in the numbers, when we get over to Knobles Grove, please, even, we're outside, thank goodness, please try to stay as socially distanced as you possibly can, especially around children. Kids who may not have been vaccinated or people who may not have gotten their vaccination would be very vulnerable. So, you know, we haven't seen a lot of these kids in a while. And of course, our first instinct is to run up and give them a big hug and welcome them, you know, say, hey, great to see you. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure we stay safe and, and don't put anybody in jeopardy. Uh, also, we need some help. So from you uh, at home, as well as here, we need help with a projectionist. Uh, we need a couple more projectionists. We need somebody to help to learn the computer in the back for the live streaming. If you're interested and have some computer abilities, and Dawn, and Dawn and or Rachel will be happy to teach you on the Zoom and live streaming. And Greg will certainly teach anybody on the projection. You gotta remember, we're losing Nathan. Nathan's going away to college. Uh, so he won't be here to be our, uh, one of our projectionists. So we would like to get a little bit bigger band of, of helpers. So if you could, if you know somebody uh, or you yourself are interested, please let either Dawn or Greg know. Also, grocery cards, of course, will be, uh, will be are, are still for sale for Giant and Weiss. They'll be out in the uh, Narthex right after service. And then those of you at home, if you want to just give Rona a call, she'll make sure that she has them ready for you. And you can either pick them up or we can, of course, deliver them if need be. And again, if you know of somebody who needs assistance, you know somebody who needs some errands run, who needs a phone call, just a smiling face. And, you know, the vis visitation team is more than willing to go out and do that. As long as you're vaccinated, we'll be happy to come out to your home. If not, then we'll just do it by phone. But we want to make sure that if you know somebody who is maybe just a little isolated and alone and needs some, uh, need some interactions and social interaction, please let us know, as well as also running errands if need be. And as I remind you every week, please be careful. Continue to social distance. Wear a mask when you're in a large crowd or confined spaces or if you go out of state and come back. Cough or sneeze into your elbow, wash your hands frequently, and please get your vaccine. This Delta variant is much more infectious or contagious, very easily passed. It's much more uh, deadly, and it's hitting young people really bad. And we're seeing, like I said, 3,500 people in one county in South Carolina. We're seeing the entire South just light up in red as the, as the infection spreads we could find ourselves right back in the same situation we were before, coming in here wearing masks or not having in-person worship. So we really need to do everything we can to make sure that our friends, our relatives, our family are all vaccinated. Because if you're vaccinated, yes, you can still get it, but the effects will not be near what they are. And even if you're vaccinated, the problem is you can pass it on to people who are unvaccinated. So we really need to come together. We need to show. The reason we're wearing our masks today and the reason we got, went out and got vaccinated is not necessarily just to protect ourselves, but it's to protect our family. Dawn and I certainly did not want to get mom and dad infected. We certainly didn't want to infect anybody here in the congregation. That is the ultimate form of loving your neighbor. Loving your neighbor. What Christ has commanded us to do. And by getting our vaccines, we are protecting not just ourselves, but all the people around us. And by wearing a mask when we're in crowded places or in you know, grocery stores and things like that, again, we're protecting those people out there who have not gotten their vaccine or have an immune system problem and got a vaccine but still are compromised. So we do that through love of neighbor. So that's the first sermon for today. Next one, the second one will come a little later. <laughs> and finally, let us prepare for worship. I want you to take two deep breaths in and slowly release them. So take a breath in. Slowly release it. Empty your mind of anything that would distract you from realizing the presence of the Holy Spirit during this time of worship. And after you've done that, 
we can now experience God's Spirit. Please join me in the choral call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. join me in the call to worship that is found on your walls and on your screens. Wait for God who deals gently with us. Watch for God's appearance among us. Out of the depths we cry out to God. Will God hear the voice of our supplications? In all times and places we can rely on God. We can know steadfast love here and now. We keep our morning watch together. We will support one another as we seek to know God. Find hope in God's power to redeem us. Give thanks for the new day God promises to us. Life's battles cannot destroy us. The losses we suffer are not the last word. Our opening, pin, opening hymn is, Lord, I want to be a Christian. On your wall, on the wall and on your screens. Please join me in the opening prayer that is on the wall and, and on your screens. We come to you, holy God, with our many needs. Some of us are people in authority with weighty decisions to make. Some of us are fighting battles we cannot win. Some has faced unexpected losses that tear at the very fabric of life. There are broken relationships among us. Feelings we do not want to admit. Realities we do not want to face. There are also joys we have not really celebrated. Reasons to give thanks to which we have never given voice. We come, O oh God, to be lifted out of our ruts and routines, seeking instead to find fullness of life with you. Amen. Please be seated.
If God should mark iniquities, who could stand? If God counted our sins, how would we ever find forgiveness? Yet the attitudes and actions that build barriers among us and shout and shut God out of our thinking and decision making can be become can be overcome. God is ready to help us. So let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screens. O Holy Spirit, how we have grieved you. How often our words have been bitter, filled with malice and anger. How easily have we uttered lies of pretension and self-protection. How readily we take for ourselves the rewards of another's labor. Forgive all that is false and evil within us and among us. Free us from the self-justifying excuses that keep us from reaching out to one another. We want to believe, to trust, to live as imitators of Jesus Christ. Help us, gracious God. Amen. Let us now confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. God redeemed us from our iniquities. Forgiveness is ours to receive and to share. God gives us the opportunities to become members of one another, speaking truth with our, <clears throat> with our neighbors, working honestly with our hands, building each other up and sharing with the needy. The gift of grace we have received grows larger in our lives as we extend it to friends and strangers we meet. for the children, and we don't have any uh, children other than infants today in, in, uh, here at uh, Trinity. So I'm going to hopefully talk to our kids at home, so actually gather around your computer screens, and I have a couple questions for you. I want you to think about some of your favorite words, okay? Maybe like chocolate, Christmas presents, vacation, meaning no school. Yeah, those are words that that make us feel good, don't they? They remind us of things that we like and that make us happy. But what about words that make other people happy or make them feel good? What are some of those words? Now think about that. Maybe, thank you. How about, can I help you? Or, let's play. These are things that show a person that we care about them, that we want to be with them. But what about words like ugly, nerd, four eyes, stupid? How do they make you and others feel? Make us feel pretty bad, doesn't it? Those are words that hurt. Those are words that hurt. And in our epistle lesson today, we are, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us to put away all bitterness, forgive one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. That means that we don't use words that will hurt or make people feel bad. We are to be imitators of God and live in love as Christ loved us. So that's my challenge. That's my challenge for you this week and for the rest of the year. I want you to only use words that make people feel good and make people feel happy. That means that we don't call people names, including that includes our brothers and sisters, okay? We put away all built bitterness, and we forgive each other when we make a mistake. So that's a pretty big request. But you know what? If you can do that for a week, then do it for the rest of the year, guess what?
I bet you can. And 41 to uh, verses 35 and 41 to 55. Jesus' self revelation and perhaps the bread of life evokes connections with the Old Testament gift of man, not only in the beginning of the gift, but in the expression of the complaint. Beginning in verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come up to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It, was, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very true, I tell you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it. And not I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. God of the Christians, God of the Gentiles, and God of the universe, open our minds today. To not just hear your word, but to rather take it in as part of us. Help us to learn why we are the body of Christ as we pray that the face of our hearts and the words of my mouth may be pleasing and acceptable to this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is part of a much larger section of Ephesians that comprises almost a third of that letter. The writer of Ephesians, assuming to be the Apostle Paul, discusses what it means to live a Christian life. 
Because even the Gentiles treat one another with honesty. They exercise self-control. They restrain themselves when filled with anger and rage. They respect the property of others and avoid slandering another person. So what makes it a different life from the Gentiles? Well, the answer is a life that is no longer alienated from God. In fact, this life is less about what one does, but more about how and why one does them. You see, while Gentiles know they are prohibited from falsehood and deceit, Christians, on the other hand, are motivated to do the same because they recognize that they are members of one another. They are members of the body of Christ. So falsehood and deceit would be against the body. Christians of that day realized that their actions were less about demonstrating one's own virtue and more about removing any opportunity to further the destructive work of evil in the world. And in the same way, Christians were motivated to not only provide for themselves, but to also work hard enough to make excess to share with others. And as we heard in the moments of children, a child knows that words can hurt emotionally. But they also understand that words can build people up rather than tear them down. And this can be a way of conveying God's grace to others. And even the Gentiles know that fostering a civil society is accomplished by being kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving. But it is Christians who are motivated to do these things because God in Christ has forgiven them. The writer of Ephesians demonstrates that while the Gentiles do many ethical things that Christians do also, Christians live a life differently because they are not alienated from God. That is the difference being made in our passage today. This is not an us versus them situation where Christians claim to be better than Gentiles. No, the point being made is that while Gentiles can be very ethical and even moral in their actions, Christians, and, Christians are ethical and moral for a different reason. So they do not grieve the Holy Spirit. It all has to do with relationship, being guided by God. The relationship we have with our God. And this, we learn, identifies those whose alienation from God has ended. Has ended because of their relationship. They live a life that imitates God as beloved children. Because they are not alienated from God, then they are not alienated from others around them either. You see, that relationship not only goes to God, but to everyone else around us. Because they have experienced God's love, because they've experienced God's love, they can now live in love toward others, even when others don't respond in kind. Christians, according to our passage today, live this life because of their reconciliation with God. So what does that say about our lives today? Now, I'm sure you know many people who live a very ethical and moral life, full of virtuous actions. And these same people have no real affiliation with a church or even a relationship with God. Now, according to the writer of Ephesians, the only difference between them and us is simply that we live in a relationship with God when they know That's it. So does this mean that we have an advantage over them? Or do they have an advantage over us because they live in a whole life while well, I'm having to go to church or believe in some of God? The question you have to ask yourself is whether that means they have eternal life as well. <laughs> so, do you believe they are forgiven when they are less than ethical? I'm sorry, the question is whether they believe they have eternal life. So, do they also believe that they are forgiven? Or are they less when they're less than ethical or more? Do they know how to forgive themselves? Or better yet, how to love themselves? You see, 
we learn that it is often hard to forgive our, yourself or love yourself if you don't believe you can be forgiven or are worthy of your own love. We see it every day. People of all ages who suffer from depression, low self-esteem, and some who even fall into addiction because they don't know how to forgive themselves or even love themselves. In recovery, the addict is to find a relationship with a higher being, something bigger than themselves, so to find forgiveness and love. We as the body of Christ are to be the hands and feet of God, imitating God in Christ through our love and service to others. We find purpose. We find a calling. We find a source of power when we feel that we can't do it anymore or by ourselves. We don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We open ourselves to the Spirit's guidance so that we can be imitators of Christ. Paul Chappelle, in his book, The Firm Foundation, tells a story about a little boy who's flying the kite. It was a windy day, and the kite kept going higher and higher. Finally, it got so high, it was literally out of sight. A man passed by and saw a little boy holding on to a string. But the man could not see the kite, and he asked the boy, How do you even know the kite's up there? And the boy replied, Because I can feel it. I can feel it. You see, although we cannot see the Holy Spirit, we should be able to sense the Spirit's work in our own lives, changing us into the image of Christ. The question we have to ask ourselves honestly is why? Why do we do the things we do? Is it just a moral and compass we develop in ourselves? Or is it because we are guided by the Holy Spirit? That we know the love of God. That we realize we are forgiven. And we have real hope and trust in eternal life. Which is it for you? And how do you love and serve yourself as well as others? May you feel the Spirit's guidance in your life. May you feel the love of God for you and for others. And may you be blessed for it. Let us continue our service with our human response. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee on the walls and on the streets.
May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers for through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
We who have accepted from God abundant gifts we did not deserve have the opportunity to express our thanks. We who have eaten manna from the wilderness are chosen to pass on the bread of life to neighbors in our community and around the world. May our giving reflect the fragrant offering and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their up offering in the basket from here in the sanctuary.